Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here today. I'm joined today by my colleague, Councilmember Marty Emerald, and the president of Californians Aware, Donna Fry. This week, as you all might know, it is Sunshine Week. It's a time for all of us to remember the importance of open government and transparency of what government does. Open and transparent government is critical to maintaining a healthy civic dialogue on all decisions that are made on behalf of the public and also maintaining the public's trust. In the last few weeks, our city has experienced two major failures in providing the public with information they deserve to have. First, the Balboa Park Celebration, Inc., the committee that was given almost $3 million tax dollars to put together a 2015 centennial celebration. We all know that the committee has nothing to show for all the money that was given to them. They are closing their doors and were less than cooperative when asked to provide their records to the public. Second, a few weeks ago, with no public notice or discussion, the city initiated an administrative regulation that would automatically delete city emails that are more than one year old. That was a bad policy. I immediately called for a public hearing and have issued a memo to the mayor stating that my council office will not adhere to the regulation. It will not agree to delete those emails. And just a couple hours ago, I heard that the policy was rescinded. However, it is clear to me that this regulation violated state law and should never have been proposed in the first place, much less taken several weeks to review. In both instances, a bull park and the email deletion, the public was never informed about what was going on and their only recourse was to file litigation, or to threaten to file litigation, excuse me. We are here today to work for the people of San Diego because they have the right to know that the city, what the city is doing and why, which is why I asked you to be here with us today. We are proposing amendments to our city charter, our constitution, that will prevent things like this happening ever again. And it will make sure that the city of San Diego is a leader in open government. As such, these amendments will send a clear message to the public that the city council and mayor and the city of San Diego are committed to making the city as open and transparent as possible. The ballot measure will accomplish the following goals by amending a couple of sections in the city charter. First, it would require that city records be retained for a minimum of two years. Second, require that when city contracts with a service provider, nonprofit or for-profit, records should, that are created in the course of conducting city business are the joint property of the city and of that provider. Third, require that the city review on a regular basis its written policies restricting the public's access to city documents and require that the city council reaffirm the need to keep such policies in place. Fourth, require any ordinance, regulation, or policy adopted by the city that limits the right of access beyond what's required by state or federal law shall not be effective until justified with a finding of fact. Fifth, state the commitment to and the importance of open data. These are not only reasonable amendments, but critical at this juncture in our city's history. Putting this measure on the ballot will be another step in re re restoring the public trust in City Hall, as it shows the public that we are taking a proactive, not a reactive, steps to prevent bad policies from being implemented. We've got to put our money where our mouth is here in San Diego and show the people, the public, that our words about open government are not empty slogans but a serious approach to leading our city forward. With that, I'd like to invite Councilmember Marty Emerald to say a few words and share her thoughts on open government transparency and this initiative. Marty. Thanks, David. Appreciate that, Donna. So good for you to be here. Uh, this is an issue that we've been working on a long time, and uh, I always celebrate uh, Sunshine Week because it is about bringing the, the truth and facts into the light of day so that everybody uh, has the same information, can make informed choices. And that's what this is about. Uh, people who elected us into office, the people who we are here to serve, uh, should expect transparency from their government. Transparency improves communication 
between citizens and government. It builds trust and makes government far more accountable. As you might recall, for many years I was a consumer advocate at uh, Channel 10 here in town uh, before being elected to public office. I listened to the concerns of the public, gathered information, and shared their stories. Often those stories had to do with a citizen's inability to navigate government to get information and get results that they were looking for. And uh, I relied heavily on the use of public information, public documents, contracts, uh, uh, disclosure documents for elected, appointed position, uh, uh, elected and appointed officials, lobbyists, and so forth. Having that access to government information uh, made a huge difference in how we were able to serve the citizens and how the citizens of this community can interact with their government and get results. Uh, it is at the heart of what we're talking about here. Building trust and allowing an open communication between the citizenry and the government. Whether it's emails, public contracts, access to the municipal codes, financial disclosures by elected officials and lobbyists, these documents help to paint a clear picture of what our government is doing. Our proposed policy would also amend open government rules to extend to parties of city contracts that would allow better oversight of businesses and other organizations that are hired to serve the people of San Diego. Uh, there's no reason why any city contractor should withhold information from the very people they were hired to serve and who are ultimately paying the bill. Expanding the scope of open government is something that needs to happen to ensure our government policies are up to date with technology as well, modes of communication, and up to date with today's administration. Again, to build trust with the public and build stronger and informed partnerships. Privacy rights of citizens will also be uh, uh, honored in this, uh, these amendments. Uh, so we talk about open government, we also talk about protection of people's privacy rights. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, turn the, uh, the microphone over to a good friend and a fellow soldier in this <laughs> battle for open government, our former city council member, Donna Fry. Thank you, thank you, council members Alvarez and Emerald for supporting this ballot measure and standing up for the public's right to know what its government is doing. This week is Sunshine Week, and our city leaders can give this annual dialogue real meaning by joining with Council Members Alvarez and Emerald in support of placing the open government measure on the November 2014 ballot. The public has a right to vote on this and make it part of their city charter to ensure that their rights of access to city meetings and documents are not denied, waived, or ignored. The public deserves certainty so that their rights of access to government information are no longer based upon arbitrary policies and regulations that change based upon who is in office. This ballot measure ensures that the paper trail of public accountability will not vanish in a year or stay hidden in the private files of a city contractor or be channeled out of sight in officials' private emails. This ballot measure protects the public's right of access because it cannot be changed at the whim of the next city council or mayor who doesn't like the sunshine. And I just wanted to go over, included in your press packets is a chart that talks about the charter amendments and why they are needed, what the problem is, and how these charter amendments will provide a solution that cannot be changed except by a vote of the public. And I'll just go over one or two of them. The public's right of access is not protected and can be changed based upon who is in office. And I think that's an important point. By placing this charter amendment on the ballot, the voters get to decide how much open government they want. When the public is denied access to government information and not told why, there is an increased risk of litigation. The solution are included in our amendments that establish a clear process 
with well-defined terms that requires denials of access to be based upon findings of fact with evidence stating why. The email deletion policy, and I do want to say that Californians Aware wants to thank Mayor Faulkner for rescinding that policy. However, it points out a very serious flaw that this ballot measure will correct, and that is that administrative regulations can be enacted or rescinded based on the whim of one elected official with no public input, no ability for the public to comment, and no, no notice to the city council members who are also elected officials. What this charter amendment will do, charter section 215 adds new language that requires all public records, including emails, to be retained for two years as required by state law. These are just some of the problems that we have identified. And instead of just saying there's a problem, Council Members Alvarez and Emerald have joined with Californians Aware to celebrate Sunshine Week and provide the public a solution to address these problems so that they never happen again.